Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to present the notion of ecological thinking and demonstrate how it can be used to develop your ideas. We'll be doing that using Infranodus text network visualization and analysis tool in combination with GPT-3 AI, which is built in that will enable you to interpret results and generate ideas based on this visual representation of your thought. And we will also be using this cognitive variability scheme, which is built into Infranodus algorithm. And I'm going to explain to you how it works and how it ensures that your thinking remains ecological. I think it's also important to mention what we mean by a thought that is ecological. So we're not talking about uh, thinking about ecology. Rather, it's a way of thinking that enables diversity and adaptivity in your thought. To explain it in very simple terms through analogy, uh, when we talk about any ecosystem, we have different species, for example. And if one species takes over the rest, if it consumes all the resources or starts killing the rest, then at some point this ecosystem will break down because uh, either there will not be enough resources or some internal balance will break and then uh, some species will just die out. So we kind of put this analogy onto our thinking process. And if we represent our thinking as a graph, which you can see here, uh, where the words or the concepts that we use are the nodes and the co-occurrences are the connections, then we represent them visually as a network that shows the main ideas or the main concepts, the most influential ones here, for example, and the different topics that they belong to. So for this discourse to be ecological, it has to have enough diversity. This is one of the main definitions of an ecological system. Um, if it didn't have diversity, then one topic, for example, this one, would overtake the rest because all the concepts inside of these topics would be too important for the discourse. This discourse would not be able to exist without this topic. It would drag and pull too much attention. And it means that the discourse would not be ecological in the sense that it would demand too much resources from the rest. This is not to say that you shouldn't have non-ecological discourses at all, because there are some situations when you want to have a discourse which is focused on one specific subject, like if you want to communicate a certain idea, ideologies, uh, maybe if you're writing like a piece of propaganda or something like that, then you want it to be very defined on central ideas. Uh, but in general, if you just want to narrate a certain story or present an idea from different perspectives, you want it to be ecological in this sense, that not one single topic overtakes the rest. Let me show you a real example that I've been actually using here. So uh, I was using it for notice to think about smart home devices and what kind of new smart home devices we could invent uh, that could be interesting and unusual somehow, right? So. Uh, we have a feature here in Infranodus that allows us to see how the discourse evolved over time. And I'm going to show you what happened. So when I just started thinking about it, as you can see, I was writing a lot about smart home devices and how they regulate, uh, for instance, I was using a lot of this word, for instance, they regulate temperature, uh, light, and so on, right? So as you can see, when I recalculate metrics at this very starting position, it was actually very uh, focused on the notion of device and regulation. And thematic diversity was biased or medium. Here it shows medium. Then as I developed this discourse, you see it became biased. It became low, or it says here semantic variability biased, or here uh, thematic diversity low. So that means that it was not ecological in the sense that I was talking too much about regulate, device, instance home and you see all the main influential concepts belonged to the same topic this one pink one right so it means that i was too biased thinking about smart home devices and how they regulate something i saw this that that the thematic diversity was low and by the way you can also see it usually on this graph here uh, it's the same scheme that i was showing you there just smaller uh, and we are at this stage at this first quadrant and that means we're developing a certain idea, but because we're so much focused on it, we're biased 
to that idea. And this is a good state, you know, at the beginning you want this focus, you want this bias because you want to develop something. And this is represented here, you know, by this image that you're kind of growing an idea, so you're making connections. You're operating on small scale, so this y-axis is a scale, you're on smaller scale, and you're coming from exploration to focus. So you're exploring and now you're focusing on a certain idea and you're developing it. So also just to give you another image because it helps, uh, this is where we're at at this point, right? We have the central idea and we're developing uh, some of them uh, further. I will leave the link to these articles in the description to this video so you can read more about it later. Okay, so this was the first stage, right? Then I noticed that, okay, uh, it's too biased, so then Infranotus is recommending me that I should shift to the next state to make it a bit more diverse and it explains to me what I should do. Z actionable inside it says here, zoom out, develop periphery. So I can get from biased to focused state, okay? Um, if I want to do that myself, I can just look at the graph, you know, and see like, okay, what do I have at the periphery? I have all this stuff about state, variability and change uh, and also changing routine activities in life, right? So I have these nodes here. So this is my periphery, or even here, you know, or even I could talk about humidity of the air. This is also on the periphery. And then it means I'm focusing more on these topics here, uh, if I want to develop this periphery, okay? So once I did that, I will show you what happened. Then the metric started changing. I shifted into this new state. So I added some ideas at the top, as you can see here. Uh, the very top part here was added. So I started talking about AI and language and language model. So I added a completely new topic by connecting it to uh, the notion of how you can change state through talking about uh, things that you haven't talked about before and using smart home devices and assistance to do that, to engage you into a conversation that expands your point of view and perspective, All right? So then I shifted into this uh, more diverse state, but I'm still not in the optimal state because it says here thematic diversity, uh, medium, so it's not yet perfect. If you click on the question mark, it explains what it means here. So you can always read that when, when you do it yourself, All right? So I still have uh, some work to do. It's proposing me here to increase diversity, it says, remove the most influential nodes or find some gaps of peripheral clusters, zoom in and bridge them with new ideas. So this is when we go into this state here. I'll show you this scheme here. So we arrive to a very interconnected discourse, which is here. And now uh, we need, it's kind of like, it's a point when we reach the limit of the resources because there is no more connections that we can make, right? The graph is kind of too focused on uh, these ideas, if I start connecting them again, it's going to be too centered around the idea of home, smart home devices and so on. So I need to focus on the gaps in the graph, exactly on this part here. You can even actually highlight some of them using this feature gap inside here. So you see, it shows me a lot of gaps uh, in this area here. So it means if I start connecting those ideas, I'm going to add something new and also I'm going to increase the weight of these underrepresented topics that, we, that, that find themselves at the periphery of the graph here at the top, right? So this is exactly what's going to happen. Instead of trying to connect what's already connected, speaking about the same thing over and over again, I'm going to focus on the periphery and it's shown here with this little diagram, right? I'm going to disconnect some stuff, I'm going to bridge the gaps, I'm going to focus on bridging connections between the topics that are not connected yet. So I'm, I'm going to enter into the third quadrant here, from the second one into the third one. And to do that, I go small scale, so I decrease the scale, and then I start exploring again. So it shows here on the axis, x-axis, that I'm going to, into the exploration mode. Less focus, more exploration. Okay, so that means I'm switching into gap insights and I'm bridging the gaps. Then what happened here is once I started bridging the gaps here, the, as you can see, I'm adding some more ideas here that connect uh, those different clusters. And gradually, 
thematic diversity increases. So we also have a coefficient here that increases and it's not yet perfect. So I'll just switch to another graph to show you what happens in the end. In the end, it looks something like this. In fact, I'm just going to add them manually and show you what happens. So we're still in this quadrant. And in order to make it go into the optimal state, we need to add some statements that will take off the focus from these ideas that take too much attention. So we, we're talking too much about home devices uh, and how they regulate mood. The word dynamic is used a lot, but we also have a lot of stuff about variability and state and how it's changing our environment. So maybe we should focus more on that, right? So I'm going to add a couple of statements into the graph and see what happens. You can just do it directly here and as you can see, now it shifts into thematic diversity optimal because I added two statements about variability and software. So I took attention from these notions that I already have sufficiently represented in this discourse and I gave a little bit more power to the notion of changing the state of variability, creating another center of power in this network and therefore making it more ecological in the sense that now it has several ideas represented, right? So uh, you also can see this here, how, how it works, you know, we're now in this quadrant and the next step is to either go back into the focused mode or to completely disconnect everything and to find the, the nuance and the smaller clusters. And we could do that. So. If we, if we want to connect ideas, then we can start thinking of the connections between them. And for this, we can use this AI insight panel based on GPT-3. Uh, and if we want to disrupt our ideas, we can also use this feature reveal underlying ideas and click it several times until our network becomes dispersed. As you can see here, thematic diversity very high. And we're starting to see things that we wouldn't normally see before. So for example, here I was talking about uh, focus or I was talking about temperature or I was very, also talking about wearable devices, something I wouldn't normally see. So this dispersal, this connection of ideas allows us to see things that we wouldn't normally notice and start making connections between smaller ideas. And this is when we're in this level. And then the next step is to go back and to focus on something specific and to develop it again. So this is kind of like how, how this process works step by step in a cycle. We're traveling through four different states, ensuring that there is moments, there are moments when there is focus, then, uh, then even more focus on the global level so we connect our ideas into a coherent discourse, then reconnecting those ideas, breaking some patterns, finding gaps, bridging them here, then either going back into focus if we want to make a few iterations or dispersing our ideas, disconnecting them to free up the space for something completely new to arrive. So this is how, how the scheme functions. Okay, then you can try it out or I can show you how I would do this step by step. So if you're interested, you can keep watching to understand how that would work on a very practical level. So for example, here I'm just going to actually go through the same process as I had earlier when, uh, when I was writing about this. I'll just name it smart home devices. Okay. And then I'm going to start uh, writing about this. So my first idea will be to add something like uh, I am interested to create a smart home device. I add this into the graph, it's visualized. Thematic diversity is low, it shows here. I'm in the first quadrant. I'm focusing on a specific idea, okay? Then I'm continuing to write. So I'll say that uh, these smart home devices should be connected to wearables so that they link our environment to our physical experience. Okay, so making it a bit more diverse. You see, 
thematic diversity increases because now we have these two separate topics uh, that are uh, distinct from one another, right? But they're still connected. Then I can say that uh, most of the smart home devices are normally uh, focused on reading a certain parameter like temperature or humidity and then regulating something in our environment in order to improve it somehow. Heat, light, etc. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more diversity into this discourse. But still, as you can see, it's quite focused because uh, I'm still talking about device and environment. Uh, so at this point, I can follow the advice that the system is giving me that maybe it makes sense to kind of find the gaps, bridge them, develop less represented ideas. I can always click here to get some specific advice. Or I can also use a GPT-3 AI, which is built in to generate this idea for me. So for example, if I click here, it's going to focus on underrepresented clusters, and then it's going to generate uh, some suggestion for me, like a question that is supposed to stimulate me to think further about this idea. So here it says, for instance, how can smart home devices be utilized to improve heat, odor, and efficiency? Okay, not so interesting for me. How can smart home devices be used to improve the order and regulation of localized temperatures? Okay, how, what are the most effective ways to use smart home devices to improve the order and heat of home? So for example, what this is telling me is that I'm too much focused on uh, these practical aspects of smart home devices. Of course, I can elaborate uh, on these ideas and say that uh, smart home devices can create a more comfortable environment through regulating heat. Then I save it. It's added into the graph, but I'm still uh, very focused on the environment, right? So maybe now is the time for me to change subject. And to do that, again, I can either look at the graph and uh, look out for the peripheral nodes and see what I can develop. So for example, if I like the word regulating, I can also say something like uh, maybe I could regulate physical states, okay, so, uh, and, and even experiences here, right, in the environment. So uh, it becomes like a very useful tool to connect ideas that are not yet connected, because you can look at the graph and see what you've been talking about, and then uh, think where you would like to have new links, and once you select those nodes, you can go into uh, AI Insight Panel here, and then uh, you can either leave this on or off. I, I like to turn it off so it doesn't take the current context into account. And then I generate a question based on these nodes that I selected that will bridge those ideas together, or that will help me bridge those ideas together. And here it says, how can digital data can be used to effective, effectively regulate physical experiences? Okay, this is interesting for me because I can say that uh, if we can read the movement of the body in relation to the environment, perhaps we can provide some feedback uh, that can enable us to feel better at our homes. So as you can see, I'm adding some new ideas. I still didn't connect this, so maybe I should respond to this directly by saying that uh, physical experience, uh, so those smart home devices could be regulating physical experience through providing data, uh, maybe feedback based on the data about our physical presence in space. Okay, so I added, you see it connects those ideas together. And now my graph is becoming a little bit more interconnected, a little bit more coherent. And then if I go into the semantic variability panel, it still recommends me to make it a bit more diverse, a bit more ecological. So I'm not so much focused on device regulating environment, but that there are other topics that come up. All right, so I can then use this feature here and 
follow the advice that I get or use the AI to generate some more ideas in relation to this topic. So here it's proposing me to connect this to clusters of temperature, humidity reading, environment regulating heat. What are the most effective techniques for regulating environment, temperature and humidity to optimize reading conditions? Okay, so for example, why not think of a smart home device? Uh, there could be a system that could optimize uh, my space for specific activities such as reading or exercise. Okay, now you see I'm focusing on smaller nodes and my thematic diversity increased to optimal because now even though the node environment is quite present, at the same time I have different topics. As you can see here, they're shown with different colors. So for example, in this green one, the word physical is important. In this pink one, the word device is important. In this green one, the word environment is important. So basically we have three different, actually several different topics, five of them, but in almost each of them, there is an influential node. So it's like we spread the influence across different ideas and topics that are present in this text. And this is why thematic diversity increased. Now I can go back here and make it even more di dispersed by introducing some completely uh, new uh, notions from outside of my thinking. So there I will ask the AI to do this again. And for example, here it's proposing me to connect environment, regulating the environment and body movement. So what are the effects of environmental heat regulation on the body relationship between movement and body temperature? So for example, that's interesting. Maybe uh, it's actually a really good idea. Maybe, uh, maybe if I want to optimize for doing more exercise in the morning, I can set my heating to a lower setting so that I'm more motivated to work out and to use my body in a physically active way. So as you can see, we're connecting this idea of temperature in space to the body and expanding upon this topic here, which was actually the first one in importance, but it didn't have any important nodes. And now the node body is becoming important. And then again, you know, you can go into gap insights uh, and then ask it to generate some gaps for you and then see if there are some missing connections. So for example, here are two interesting clusters, reading and uh, devices. So if you don't want to interpret it yourself, you can also turn on GPT-3 interpretation of those clusters and then it's going to show you what they mean. So I'll just reset the highlight and highlight again. So we have this gap between wearable tech and exercise optimization. Okay, so let's just switch to that again. Wearable tech and exercise optimization. So how can we optimize exercise or through wearable tech? This is not represented enough in this discourse. So I'm going to add some ideas in relation to that. I'll say that uh, a smart home device could also come as a bundle with a wearable device that connects physical experience to our environment and helps us optimize our exercise routines by regulating light, temperature, uh, humidity, etc. Okay, and then I'm connecting them together. Uh, the whole system is recalculated and then a new suggestion arises. So as I said, you can use the graph itself to generate these connections or also follow the suggestions here. All the blue buttons you see, they will ask the AI to generate uh, the suggestion for you based on what you identify as, a, as an important topic to develop at the moment. And as you can see, we started from something really focused 
and then we made it more diverse. So this was the idea of this ecological system, that we started from an idea that was really focused uh, on one subject, like environment and home, smart home devices, and then we developed it, then we introduced some variety into it, some new topics, brought in the body, exercise, and then went into focus and sometimes also dispersing by introducing things from the periphery. And if I show it using this graph, we started here, then we went here. So as you can see, more ideas are added to the central one. Then, then we created some diversity in the graph. And then the, the next step is to either grow this diversity to such an extent that everything becomes disconnected and creates space and resources for new ideas. Or we could also focus on a, on a new item here and then go and develop it further. So this would be the movement that would be either like this or like that. Okay, so this is how it would work with the graph. And if I can show you also the same thing using this time range feature here, you will see how the discourse evolved over time. So I'll just set this to update metrics. So you can also see uh, the whole setup. So as you can see, focused on device, then added some stuff about the environment, then physical, and then optimizing, and then body. And as you can see, it became much more diverse. So this was, in our terms, not so ecological because it was too focused on uh, specific ideas. This became diverse enough to introduce uh, different subjects and to spread the attention between different topics and to diversify this discourse, making it more adaptable, open to external influence, and also providing a lot of opportunities and bridges to enter into it and to connect it to other topics, such as wearable devices, physical well-being, uh, you know, exercise and so on. So this is basically how you would go through this workflow. I know it's on the more complex level, so it might not seem easy at the beginning, but basically what you can do is just start writing and follow this feedback here. Uh, your task is to arrive to the optimal state. So this is the easiest way to use it. You know, you don't want to be in the red state here on the left and you don't want to be too far right. Like if you're too far right, it means that your ideas are too dispersed. So you're aiming for the optimal space. Uh, state. To do that, you follow the advices which are given, uh, for example, here on Gap Insights, or you can simply open AI Insight Panel and just follow the advices here. It's going to guide you through. You can also look at the graph and think how to make it a little bit more diverse, how you can develop ideas that are underrepresented, so not one single node overtakes the other. So you can do that, or you can also use this scheme and read the advice that is given to you here in order to see how you could develop this discourse further. So I hope it's understandable how it works and uh, if you have any questions please let me know. Uh, try it out on infernodos.com. Thank you.